Hello everybody, it's James, the person behind Homeless Sock Puppet. I am the guy the parasite is attached to. How's it going? Today I'm bringing you another homeless shelter story. This homeless shelter story has a pretty good twist in it, and if you skip to the end, I don't think you're going to have the context to really make a good judgment. So stick around, listen, and let me know what you think. So this story is going to follow two people. One we're going to call Trucker, because he's a truck driver, and the other one we're going to call Leather because he always wears this leather jacket. The story format is going to go as such. I'm going to explain how I met them, my impressions of them, why they both ultimately left the house, who came back, and then the big twist. Also, I apologize for the lighting in this room. I know this red mic is making me look awful, but I'm very embarrassed to be me. And I have raccoon eyes. I only, I'm only pale like right here and right here because I haven't been sober all that long yet. So. My skin is still frightening, and I just don't want to show you more than I have to. So, let's get on to the story of Trucker and Leather. Trucker and Leather both got here about the same week. They didn't know each other previously. They met in the house. Trucker was obviously a truck driver. His story was that, well, one day he needed to use something to stay awake. Another truck driver offered him methamphetamines. He got busted. His life fell apart. He went into psychosis. He exposed himself at a park. So he has indecent exposure on him. He goes to jail. He loses everything. His family leaves him. And he somehow ends up here. Crazy story, right? Now, Leather's story was that he was also recently homeless. The drinking had finally caught up with him. He snapped once, and he hit his wife, and then his children. He acted like a very bad guy. He lost his family. He kept drinking and eventually became homeless, now ending up at the shelter. These two would quickly become friends. They'd get drunk at the shelter. They'd, you know, do the typical homeless thing. They'd stay here. During the day, they'd go out with their backpacks. They'd ride the local buses. They'd get the biggest, cheapest thing of vodka they could. They'd come back. The employees leave. Them and their friends get drunk. This would continue for quite a few weeks, even a few months. After all, I'm sure as you know that there is a culture around not snitching. And even if you're an addict and drugs and alcohol are being brought into a shelter, it's generally pretty unsafe to snitch on people. So nobody told and these guys got away with it until one day Leather gets too drunk and he's sad about his family and he punches a hole through a door in the house. That is a big no-no. Any type of violence and you're out. Even against a door. Leather was out. Somehow, and maybe karmically, his friend, Trucker, is also out. Just a matter of weeks later. Nobody knows why. Word on the street is, there's an unsettled court case down south, involving his indecent exposure charges. So I no longer see Trucker. However, Leather's still around. Now he's street homeless again. And he's making it work somehow. You see him with the other street homeless, and... Every time I see him, he's just sloshed, laying on the ground, looking at the sky, stumbling around in his leathers. A year goes by, and both statuses are the same. I see leather kind of tooling around town, being street homeless, as street homeless or street homeless, and not seeing any sign of trucker. I start noticing that I don't see leathers anymore. I don't know what happened to him. And again, almost if these two are tied by fate, a week within me not seeing leathers walking around anymore, Trucker comes back. And Trucker comes back to the house. Right? Leather couldn't because of the violence thing. He damaged a door. Once you do something like that, you are out. Before I tell you about Trucker and him coming back, in the time that Leather was out, I kind of learned more about Leather. Leather didn't recently lose his family. He'd lost his family a while ago. Leather also wasn't recently homeless. He had been homeless a while, and he'd been to many states and to many homeless shelters. I also learned that after leaving this shelter, he wouldn't make it to another state. He would overdose on one of those walking paths I take to my Mick Wage, and he'd be carried away and buried in town. It would take me weeks to think to look in the obituary, and there he was. Trucker, now back, lots of people happy to see him. He was the building drunk who was always sneaking things in, as snug as a bug in our good homeless shelter. 
but I also learned the truth about Trucker, the guy they did let back in. Now, Trucker didn't just take meth once. Trucker sold meth on his trucking routes. Also, he didn't just have a psychotic break and expose himself. He was distributing you-know-what images of the variety adults never should, right? And so here's kind of the twist. Yes, obviously, violence is terrible, and violent men are violent men. They should get punished for their crimes. That is terrible to beat your family. But the guy we let back in is a meth peddling PDF file, we'll call him. Really. And in this building, you're not supposed to house them. It's so, like, it's, when I came here, I remember asking, hey, um, we don't allow certain crimes to come in here, right? And he was like, absolutely. We don't allow murderers in here, since proven false. And we definitely don't allow people who are guilty of sexual nature crimes. Also proven false by our good trucker. He's still in the building. So let me tell you my thoughts and why this story played out this way. Why Leather, a violent guy who beat up a door, was put on the street to die. And why Trucker, the meth peddling PDF file, was welcomed back into the building. Because one made paperwork for the employees of the house, and the other didn't. That's why. That's the only reason in my mind why. And the second thing I want to ask you is this. How long could you stay in a place like this and still respect yourself? It does wear on you, I promise. And everybody would have a time limit. And I know everybody watches videos about how to stay calm and they think of themselves as this person that isn't affected by judgment and isn't affected by circumstance. But I promise you, every person is, even if they don't want to admit it. So just real quick, if this was the situation that you lived in, where you're going to have these types of neighbors and the filtering process keeps the worst in, who just don't get caught, how long until you lose your mind? How long? How long of you walking out of this building and being associated with the others here until you hate yourself, until you hate being seen in public? Comment below.